my old buddy. This guy, uh, never forget Gary. Gary Perry's gonna come now, but uh, I'll never forget him. One time we were on a Death Valley walk. We went on a we, we went on a Death Valley walk, and there was a, a guy there, and he he was just kind of a one of them guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just kind of like a pain. And uh, he said something real smart, Alec, and we were in this bus, and uh, we were in this bus going across to pick up people because we were walking a 100-mile walk through Death Valley to raise funds for uh, 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 people to adopt children. And so we were doing that, and Gary was in there, and. That guy, I mean, that's the, the first time I really saw his sense of humor. And this guy said something real smart out to our whole bus. And G Gary just kind of looked at him and he goes, Oh, I feel the love, brother. And I mean, the whole, I'll never forget that, Gary. I, I, I'll never forget it. And the whole bus just cracked up. I mean, it, because everybody knew this guy was just being a pain. And everybody just cracked up. It made us all laugh. But I'll tell you what, this guy brings the joy of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Gary Perry is one of our 18 members of Faith Ministries with us all. and uh, He's uh, Dave and Bonnie's son-in-law. He's married to Julie. And uh, what a blessing he is to us. We love you, Gary. Amen. You make me laugh, brother. I love you, buddy. We're in the right march right here. This is We're it. The flood march right That's right, buddy. We're in. <laughs> Thanks, bud. second year of doing youth camp so it is, uh, so we had a great time it was a god thing for us to be able to have camp because stuff shut down my my son is a uh, camp director back in arkansas no camp all summer and uh, they did a project with some of the staff all summer but you know places around here i'm doing a project up in ward colorado at a a uh, big youth camp facility up there that, that had a loss this last year, and I'm up there working, and they were pushing to try to get ready for the summer. Well, they got shut down. They said, you can't, you can't have a kitchen. I said, well, how do you have a camp without a kitchen? <laughs> That's Boulder County, and uh, they're kind of a little different there. <laughs> the Soviet Republic of Boulder. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, you know, it's so funny to me. You can have a restaurant which has a kitchen and serve. Why can't the camp have that? And so they had, they got a big facility. They didn't have any camp this summer. So we got blessed. And we came out of uh, our world conference, and we didn't know what was going to happen. And Eagle went and talked to uh, the camp director up there. And they said, well, right now you can have 50. And... Uh, 
we're petitioning uh, the state to open up at least to 50%. So I didn't say anything. I had heard in my heart, God said 90. So that's what I was believing for. So I let a couple of weeks go by and I, I finally called the guy up and I said, Chris, uh, what's the status up there? What's going on? He said, well, I just heard Broadmoor Hotel is open 100%. He said, if they can open 100%, I can at least open 50. Yeah. You know, so he said, how many you got coming? And at that time, I had 75. And I said, well, I got 75 signed up right now. And uh, he said, yeah, come on, we'll do it. We'll do it. So we did that, and I got closer to camp. And got closer to camp, and he said, you know, maybe we ought to cut it at 90, because that's about 50% for us. I said, I'll do that. <laughs> And I uh, called him back in a day or two, and I said, man, Chris, I got a couple more than 90. Yeah, I said, is that going to be okay? And he said, yeah, as long as it's not like 110 or something. We ended up having 95 kids and leaders up there and uh, had six little ones that they didn't count in that number. So we had a great time. Great. Uh, it was the best camp we've ever had. And I was so blessed to have Devin and his group come up, man, Steve, uh, catch the fire, and they're doing an awesome job with their youth. So we got to uh, partner with them a couple times this year, go visit Hans and Chris and I went there and our team went and shared and it was awesome. And so he brought 10, he kept calling me, he said, can I bring one more? I said, yeah. yeah. Tex would call, he said, man, we got two more. Can we bring two more? I said, bring them, you know, so. So we got there, but I, I want to show for camp, I want to show our camp video. Uh, this is just a little glimpse for those that don't see camp and what's going on there. This will show you a little bit of that. Do I need to turn these off up here? Or this one? Shut the stage lights off up there. There we go.
It's over. You're dismissed. No. Hey, I, I wanted Tex Cox to come up and speak for just a little bit about camp, man. He's got his kids that have been up here. His daughter wrote the drama and led worship this year and just did a tremendous, powerful job. And Tex got to come back. Last time he was there, we put him on probation because we had one of his staff come up die. You don't do that at a youth camp, man. Good thing Dave was there, raised her from the dead. Yeah, that's a story. But I wanted Tex to share a little bit. Oh, man, sitting here watching that video, and like, how do I even, where do I start? Yeah. Because if, if there's, I know y'all sitting here watching that, it's like, it just seems like a bunch of kids, a bunch of goofy stuff going on and everything. And there's so much depth to every picture that was in there. We see these kids come in, and, and, and so many of these kids have real hard life issues coming into this camp. And when you think of church camp, you think of Kumbaya Lord sitting around the campfire, a bunch of people, you know, reading the Bible, forcing these kids to do things they don't really want to do. And somehow they've made it where they can use all these activities, the drama, the eating. I mean, they were eating, that, that wasn't a caramel apple, that was a caramel onion. <laughs> and I used to be a part of a, a motorcycle ministry would go into the prisons. And they'd ride their motorcycles in there in the prisons and, and they played just regular uh, Leonard Skinner music and stuff, they had a live band. And, and they would take the time the first few days to connect with the prisoners, not just another Christian ministry coming in here, force Jesus down your throat. And they had, they just had an ability to connect with these guys and make relationships. And this is what's happening at this camp. It's the same thing because they come in here and they love on these kids. And some of these kids have never in their life, their entire life felt love, unconditional just, you, you know, totally kids true. know when you're just putting one over on them or not or when you're really serious. And they, that they just that starts it off and melts their heart. Well, then they form teams and they, they set the kids up in teams and they start teaching them how that they don't have to go through life by themselves fighting their own battles, but they can, they can join together with other believers and help themselves get through life. Um, my kids have been blessed be connected with this. We've watched them grow up in the camp. Uh, it was emotional for me this year because when my daughters were 10, 11, 12 years old, they started coming. Uh, your daughters, Gentry and Kendall, were leading the worship. I don't know if you have ever been blessed to watch those two girls lead worship, especially when they start singing in tongues and singing in psalms and everything. It is a moment. I mean, it is eternal moment. Powerful. And my daughters would come home from camp, and their dream was to one day become the worship leaders of this camp and to be able to sing with Gentry and Kendall. Uh, that was their dream. They wanted to become Gentry and Kendall. And Corbin, my, my oldest son, uh, Jordan was the drummer, and he's a big old beefy guy, and he he's, plays that drum like you wouldn't believe, and that was his dream. To get to play with Jordan and you know be in the worship team and all that. This year we saw that come to pass. The girls and Corbin have been on the worship team, but they never got to sing and perform with the ones that led them to want them to. And I, I was in the audience bawling like a little baby <laughs> to see that dream. See. And, and, and I say all that because what's happening is, is is kids that never had an opportunity to dream or believe that anything could ever happen in their life, the camp plants a seed in their heart and then nurtures that seed through the years. And these children that don't never have a future or they didn't feel like they did, they be, then become the leaders and we see them all the time. They, they grow up in the camp, and then they, in turn, become the leaders to minister to the next group of kids that need that connection. And they connect with kids in a way that us adults can't. They do, y'all do a great job of that, but a kid, they, a lot of kids distrust adults. 
And when a kid is ministering to a kid or a young adult is ministering, they're able to reach in there and touch their heart. Seeing kids get born again, we had a lot of atheists this year that came through. They came to camp. They were mad at God. Their family lives were a wreck. Things have happened to them. And then as you talked about it last night about the pedophilia stuff going on, it is amazing. I've sat back there in awe at how many kids go through that in their lifetime. I had no idea it was that big, that, that many. I knew kids go through that, but not that many. And then they come in here and give, you get a chance to minister to their heart, put them back together. And when you see that moment when they realize, you know, we had one of the toughest, you've got to be ready to answer some tough questions too. Oh, <laughs> These kids don't cut you no slack. Yeah. None. And what I'm asked, you know, I was raped. Where was God? Where was God when that happened? Why did God let that happen to me? You gotta, you gotta be ready to answer. And we did. We answered. We said, God, God was there. God tried to prevent it all the way up to that point. He just needs somebody to listen. He had people to try to. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. I'll start preaching. Yeah. But it touched their lives, and we saw people realize, you know what? God is a good God. He is a good God. He's always there with us. He's always for us. He's never gets us. By the end of the camp, when the kids got up to testify, that was their testimony after testimony after testimony. I finally realized God really does love me. God has plans for me. And they, they're like, I cannot wait to get back to camp again next year. Yeah, it's incredible. So if you have an opportunity at some point to uh, support this part of Faith Ministries International, if you have a chance to support it, because I'm telling you, your money doesn't stop at the end of the day when camp goes. It continues on because we're seeing these kids become leaders in their churches. We're seeing them become ministers themselves and going out into the world and traveling and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's because of this ministry right here. So I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come up real quick. Um, it's so true. I mean, that's what makes camp fire for us is that you have kids that come in and they get hold of the true God. They see God who is real. And that relationship with the leaders that they have with God, and it changes its affections. It changes their lives. And uh, Hans does the spiritual gifts class. Uh, since Dave is not here anymore, he passed that on. And he, what he did, and I, I tell young people that have kids today, I said, we're not in the business of raising kids. Parents, we're not in the business of raising kids. Our business is to train our kids. Raising kids means food, clothing, and shelter. The foster care system can do that. What we are doing is training kids to see the real God and have that real relationship with him so that it will carry them on for a lifetime of no matter what happens, what comes about. So uh, so anyway, uh, Hans said, yeah, man, I'm trained, I'm ready. He did. And so he does the spiritual gift class, and we had such miracles happen this year in the class. I wanted Hans to share just a couple. Yeah, we had a, a wild time, man. The kingdom is about, about multiplication, you know, and as... As dads, as fathers in this room, whether it's natural or spiritual, your heart is to see your kids go and do and be all that God's called them to be. And so um, one of the things we do, and we learn this all from Dave um, and, and hanging around everybody, you know, we, we, it's caught more than taught. It's something that you, you pick up into the flow of things. And, um, you know, so, so what we did is we teach the kids First of all, we get in the Word a little bit, real, real briefly, but enough to... We're doing it from a place of, of God's identity in Christ, of who God says they are as sons, as daughters in Him. And then secondly, we learn to hear God's voice, and then we start practicing right there. You know, Dave always said you got to practice. You know, lawyers and doctors get paid a lot to practice. Amen? Yeah. Man, why aren't we practicing? we got the kingdom of God inside of us. The only... The benefit is the life of God, the abundant life of God for people to receive. And so the kids, 
would would practice hearing God's voice. We'd have them pray in the Holy Spirit, make sure everyone's born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, those are kind of the, the foundations. And then from there, start practicing hearing God's voice and then begin to call out what they were hearing, teaching them how to prophesy, teaching them how to, how to flow in this. And they would call things out. I mean, and they're thinking, well, is that me? Is that, you know, bad breakfast or what, what's going on? I don't know. I'm learning to hear God's voice. But they would call it out, and then we'd have those kids come up and minister to whoever needed that, whether that was physical stuff, soul stuff, heart stuff, any of it, and they're receiving. And so, you know, you're, you're working with the group over here, and then this group over here is doing stuff, and this group over here is doing stuff. And so the word God gave me to describe this is manifold. And that means multifaceted or multivaried. In other words, there's so many expressions of God's love going on all at the same time. And it's just beautiful because you're, you're over here. You know, we have a lot of teachers, but we don't have a lot of fathers. Mm-hmm. And people need to be fathered. They need to be loved. They need to know they're safe, protected, provided for, sozoed, if you will. They need to experience that. And, and uh, like Tech said, some of these kids have never experienced that their whole life. I mean, they come up here. I tell people camp's better than Christmas. It is. There is nothing that I've seen in my life that will change a, a youth or anybody in four days like this camp will. And we've been doing this now. This is my 21st year of, of being a part on some level of it. And so this is just awesome, man. It, it was just awesome. We had a great time. Um, God showed up miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle in, in the kids' lives where they're experiencing it. They're doing it. They're laying hands on for the first time. And, and watching God do miracle signs and wonders through them as believers. So that's the environment. That's the heart. Um, if you can sponsor kids, if you can get kids there, uh, whatever you can do, make sure if, if you have a, a son or daughter or, or grandchild, get them there. Nieces, nephews, doesn't matter. Get them there. It'll change their life forever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amen. That's the truth, man. That is good stuff. I mean, when you when you impart to kids at a young age what God can do through them, it's not that you got to wait to my age or Ed's age or Dennis's age or become a, a pastor or go off to Bible college to learn this stuff. You you can be right in there in the Bernie Bush University. And that's where we're at, man. We're just out there just saying, kids, you guys can do this. We had some miracles. We had a, a couple of girls that had their eyes. They had glasses. Their vision was healed. His, his daughter was there. We had another kid that was there had flat feet. And right in front of them, arches grew in their feet. Man, that'll, that'll get you. When kids see the power of God in operation, that will get you. That'll change some things. So that's awesome. I, I have fun at camp. Uh, I don't know when I'll be done with camp. You know, they just let me keep coming and put me in the drama and have me try to figure stuff out. Man, you better be careful, man. I had to get myself in trouble here. So anyway, I want to talk about that God wants to have competent players. When we're talking about catch the vision, as we were looking at that in our flyer hat, it has the, the mitt in the game, and, and I was thinking about baseball. Made me, what made me think about that, and and in that you look at it, you got the major league, and you have the draft, and they sit out there and they draft players that are in high school because they see potential in them. And uh, as a kid, everybody grows up and you're playing sports and doing stuff, and it, it was always that thing where they had two captains, and then everybody lined up and you picked, you got to be picked, and it was the worst thing to be the last one picked. Man, you didn't want to be the last one picked. <laughs> And if you, if you were the last one picked, and especially if there was a girl picked in front of you, you just might as well be the, you know, you're the manager, you know. You go, I'm the bat boy or something, you know. You're the water boy, that's it right there. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I love how God does this because God picked us. God picked us. He drafted us. We're on God's team. They come in all different shapes and sizes. 
There's the team right there, man. Oh, yeah. That boy's in the back corner over there. He didn't get in the picture yet. But, so. but, you know, God chose us. You know what that makes us right out of the bat? Winners. God chose us. We're winners. In Romans 5, chapter, eight, or chapter 5, verse 8, it says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It wasn't that we were the best. We didn't have the most skills. It didn't matter what it was. He died for us in our worst condition. He had to purchase us. He paid a price, and that was His blood. God's blood paid. He bought us. You know, I don't. some of you guys, I've been to horse auctions, and I've been to cattle auctions. They're two different things. First time I went to a cattle auction... The cows went in and out so fast, my head was spinning. I'm like, how do you bid on these things? Because they'll come in, and by the time, I mean, they got a, a load of yearlings coming through there, and they're just like, boom, 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 just so fast. It didn't matter. They had an eye. They all got bought. They're buying beef. But unlike us, God didn't just select one or two. He selected a whole bunch. He selected all of us. It even says in 2 Corinthians 5.19 that he reconciled us to himself. The word reconcile means to restore relationship. Did you hear that, men? God didn't just buy us to put us on the team like they do major league players. He reconciled us because he wanted relationship with us. That's the difference between religion and real walking with God is relationship. That's what we teach the kids is that God wants to have relationship with you at this age. Not when you get old. He wants it now. He wants to start young so you can hear at a young age the voice of God. You don't learn that at Bible college. Hearing the voice of God doesn't come at Bible college. It doesn't come by a book. You can read about how-to stuff, but it comes through practice. Yes. It comes through time with Him. And the sooner you can learn that, the sooner you can understand He wants relationship with you. That's huge. You may ask, why did He pick me? I mean, I'm... I, I'm the bad boy. I'm the scruffy one. I'm the one. Why did he pick me? Other than he created us. The reason he picked us is he saw potential in us. Everybody that God's created, he sees potential in his creation. Draft is based on potential. Major League, well, if you got potential, you'll get high in the draft. You don't have a lot of potential, you got to fight your way. Try to work it. Crazy that they draft and you start out in single A and then go to double A and triple A and finally work your way up into the big leagues and you don't do so good, then you go back down and have to work your way back up. But it's kind of like how God sees his potential. It's kind of like a horse auction. The horse auction, they bring them out, and it's not like run in and run out. They take that horse and they walk it back and forth. And they'll sit there. It may be 10, 15 minutes. They walk that horse back and forth because they want you to see the potential that is in that horse. Well, we didn't have to walk back and forth to God. He saw the potential in us immediately. It's like with his disciples. You know, when Jesus was picking out his disciples, he didn't go to, you know, you know Judea University or... Jerusalem, <laughs> College of the Refined, you know. He went out and got some just rough guys because he saw potential in those guys. We saw fishermen. We saw, you know, a tax collector. We saw just rough people. He was a carpenter. His dad was a carpenter. But he saw something different because he came to Simon. And he said, Simon, you'll no longer be Simon. You're going to be Peter. You're going to be a rock. 
That, that time, he wasn't a rock. He was kind of wishy-washy. He was still in the flesh doing things. Even to the end, he got a sword out and was chopping ears off, you know. But that's what he saw in us. He sees in you potential. He doesn't see the rough side, the fisherman side. He doesn't see the unskilled side of you. He sees in you potential. We preach that at camp. We teach kids that. God sees potential. You can be what you want to be. Get a vision. Catch a vision of your life. So the biggest thing is, is that we got to learn who we are in Christ. Because it talks about that's what he did. Everything that God has given us, he's given it to us in Christ Jesus. Yes. So we got to figure out who we are in Christ. Yes. He didn't just recruit us. He put the best in us. He put the best potential inside of us. He has the best potential inside of you. These are some of the things. We're a new creation in Christ. We're a royal priesthood. We're not trailer trash. We're royal priesthood. We're a chosen people. We're a holy nation. We're without condemnation. There is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, right? We got to take that. You know who condemns us most in life? Don't say your wife. Because you're on your life. It's us. We're the biggest condemners of ourselves. You know? We got to take that vocabulary away from ourselves. We got to see ourselves how God sees us as sons of God. Come on. Not bat boys. We're sons. We sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus right now. Christ lives in us. The hope of glory. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. That's a good word for what we're going through right now in this time. You know, I praise God. We had 100 at camp. We had zero COVID problems. Not one. Not one. We prayed protection over our camp and our kids and everything. Not one. Not one single one. We're no longer servants. We're no longer bad boys. But we are friends of God. It's a different position. It's a different view of ourselves. We no longer have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And I love the exchange that we got with God. Zero potential. He gave us 100% potential. We are heirs of Christ, heirs of God, and and co-heirs with Christ, citizens of heaven. We're members of the body of Christ. We're on team Jesus. That's awesome. That's awesome. But God gives us choice. It's one of the things that we talked about at camp. You know, it's so amazing that at camp, I pray, I don't just say, oh, next year we're going to do the Flintstones. You know, I, a lot of times I use movie themes and stuff like that because there are great messages in there when you put God with it. And so what we did is that we took the, uh, the Jumanji experience. We came up with the idea is that it's a jungle out there. We came up with that at the end of last year before anything happened in 2020. We had no idea. And I actually had a whole different theme planned for camp this summer. And God changed it at the last minute and spoke some things. I said, I'm going to run with that. I hear the Spirit of God. And we changed it to Jumanji. It's a jungle out there. Pretty appropriate for this summer, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you run with God, man. You hear it. You listen to God. He'll, He'll let you be ahead of what's going on. He prepares you ahead of what's going to happen. And so we change that. But our life is made up of choices. We can either see ourselves as as God sees us and what God has put inside of us, or we can see ourselves as the bat boy. You know, just struggling around, hanging around the fringe of the team, hoping to be a part of the excitement of what 
going on, never getting a chance to bat, never getting a chance to field, never getting a chance to, to play the game. God said our choices determine in life what we're going to do. He gave that to us. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never experienced Jesus coming down here and leading me by the hand through my day and saying, "This today, this is what you're going to do. He doesn't do that. Man, He's up there intercessing, uh, interceding for us. Yeah. He's up there t- talking to the Father about what's, what's going on. And telling the Holy Spirit, he said, hey, Gary needs to change camp theme to this because this next year, this is what's going to happen ahead of time. Our choice, it's one of the biggest mysteries of life as humans is the gift of choice that God has given us. That's part of the mystery of the kingdom, the treasures that God has given us. And as we make quality choices in our lives, guess what? Good things are going to happen. Not only did he pick us, not only did he see potential in us, but he also transformed us. And I love this part of it. He put the power in us to live a transformed life. Romans uh, 12.2 talks about that transformation process that goes on. The Greek word is metamorphosis. That's there. And it's a transformation from the inside out. But metamorphosis has two parts. Yeah, it's the it's the uh, nature of the person that's completely changed to a super by a supernatural event that goes on. That's the transformation that we a lot a lot of us talk about, so that the rest of your life you can live a full life, not a dead man's life. God, that's the transformation. We most of the time people you see people out there, it's dead men walking. He didn't do that for us to walk around dead. He wanted us to be alive and aware of what's going on around us. But the other process of transformation is he is transforming us from immature to adults. From immature children to adults. Now the last thing... That is the last thing that you want to be recognized as, as an immature adult. Thank you, yes. I mean, that's the worst thing. Is, Cora, I didn't get my way today. Oh, you're not meeting my needs. Well, God, look at my kids, man. They are so out there. Where did they get that hair color? God wants us to mature, and that's part of that transformation. And how that happens is, is going back to seeing ourselves as Jesus sees us, as God sees us, but persuading our hearts. Yeah. We have to persuade ourselves. And that's where it happens at. You know, science has found out that the human heart has a brain just like our regular brain. It operates independently of that, but jointly together. It has um, functions of beat, not only beating and sending blood out through the body, but the heart possesses a brain that sends up to 40,000 neurons that goes out and it can sense, it can learn, it can feel, it can remember our heart. Now, people are saying, well, that's just crazy stuff. How do they measure that? You know, science has measured that. They've come up with it. But there is more neuron, neurons, that is correct, in the heart than in the brain. And that's why God says, guard your mind. He said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it uh, springs the issues of life. Being diligent to guard our hearts. John 14.1 said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. Follow me. John, 1 John 3.20 says, For God is greater than our worries, than our worried hearts, and knows more about us than we do about ourselves. Amen. That's why we can trust God. <clears throat> From these verses, we can see that God, your heart affects all that you do, that your heart can be troubled, and that your heart can be worried. And God doesn't want us to fear anything. Fear not. 
Don't be worried about anything. The last one I want to talk about, well, that last two, I, I fooled you, um, is I love about, unlike baseball, do you know what God has in his contract with us? He's got a no-trade clause. Man, I love that. Major League Baseball, man, you can be the best player in everything and got all this money coming in, they decide they want to trade you, you're gone. Bye-bye. But with God, there's no trading. He's not trading us. You know what that means? It's not about our performance, guys. It's about God's faithfulness. God has never let down one single person in history. You won't be the first. Because He is faithful. It is not your faithfulness, it is God's faithfulness. And He has promised that He will never fail us. I love that, man. No trade clause. I'm on Team Jesus to the end. I love that. The last thing I want to say is provision. That with the team that we're on with Jesus, God provides provision for us. Philippians 4.19, it says, You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need, His generosity exceeding even yours, and the glory that pours from Jesus. God's generosity, we can't, we can't even imagine God's generosity. It is so greater than us. And I know as a father, I want to give my kids all that I can give them. Without school, no. You know? I want to give them all the, and the best chance and the best opportunity for them. And that comes with teaching. It's not coming with raising kids. It comes with teaching kids, training them about the Lord and the wisdom of the Lord. We have to trust the provision of God at work, even when it doesn't seem like it. We're in a pandemic time quoted by this world, but I'm in a world that God has every provision that I need in Christ Jesus. And I I do construction work, and the company I work for is that we were uh, deemed, what was it, uh, essential work. Uh, uh, Surpro is our sister company, and they do a lot of mitigation and all kinds of floods. They're all down at the hurricane right now. A bunch of our guys are down there. And uh, we're, we're deemed essential. And, but that doesn't mean jobs keep coming in. So in the construction industry, I, we do a lot of multifamily stuff. And once this started happening, they canceled all their projects and pushed them off to next year. And I'm like, God, what are we going to do? What's, what's going to happen? And so an event, a, a major water loss happened in this building down in South Denver. And... Surpro did the mitigation side and they asked us to come in and do the reconstruction side. It was almost a million dollar job and it provided uh, work for us for four months all the way through this shutdown. And now, now we're coming back out of it and all the other jobs are coming back in. But God provided provision in there. At the 11th hour when they're about to lock things up, God provided provision for your church. You know, that's God, man. And you can't go and figure that stuff out. You get your mind locked into that and try to figure that stuff out, you'll get worry, anxiety, fear. Everything of the world will come in on top of you. The heaviness will come in and it will weigh you down and you won't be able to run. You'll be able to hit the ball, but you won't be able to run to first base because the weight of the world's on top of you. God chose you. You're on his team. It's got that no trade clause in there. He's with you to the end. He sees in you what you don't see in yourself. And he has provision for you. Uh, as I close right here, if there's a heaviness that's on you. 
We're going to break that right now. In Jesus' name. You guys, just close your eyes. If you feel that weight of the world on you, if you feel that heaviness, no matter where it's from, what it's, what it's being caused by, I want you to stand up right now. Team Jesus with a no trade clause, that means he's with you to the end. His faithfulness is there for you. Father, I just reach out to my brothers right here. And we say in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever that is, wait, we say it is released from you in Jesus' name. Get out of here. This is Team Jesus right here. They have provision. They're not bench warmers. The Spirit of God dwells inside of them. And they see themselves as Jesus sees them. You're faithful, God. You're more faithful than we could ever be in any area of our life. You're more faithful. You've never failed one single person. And you're not failing us. Father, I thank you for supernatural release and provision. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Play ball. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, brother. Woo! If that wasn't clear enough, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> hey, I appreciate a clear message. Does that make sense? Don't you? Come on, that was great, Gary. I appreciate that word. Give him a hand. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then uh, Rob Mahoney just passed me a little note. Where are you, Rob? There he is right back there. See that guy? That's Rob. See him? Wave at him, Rob. That's him. Yeah, he is a, he's a gold panner. And uh, he wants to do a gold panning uh, Demo. demonstration uh, after lunch. And what he's guaranteed is everybody gets a full ounce of gold. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, tell us what you're going to do, Rob. Come on. <laughs> now he's nervous. You get a full ounce of gold after you move a ton of dirt through the plant. <laughs> That's what I guarantee. And each one of you. So what, what I'm going to do is just a real quick uh, root, raw type of demonstration of collecting gold, prospecting, some history, where to go, what to do. Uh, you, you'll be amazed where you can find it and uh, be amazed, but um, you're not going to get rich. It is more of a hobby unless you are moving that ton of dirt through your plant every hour. <laughs> hey, man, that would be fun. I'm going to the house uh, behind my big ugly truck, so my beautiful truck. <laughs> and, awesome. Uh, we'll have a little demo. Hey, you know what I suggest is that you just wait right down there in the, in the gym and then gather your guys all together in the gym after lunch and then take them over there. Yeah. What? No, oh, I don't know. Probably, what, one-ish? One-ish, a little after, whatever. Yeah, right in that time, time frame. That's great. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate it, guys. And then also, tonight, we do our knife exchange. So we all have a pocket knife, amen? And if you don't have a pocket knife... Uh, there's some knives floating around here for sale. I don't know if they sold them all yet or not. Also, Big R is open and Ace Hardware is open. And uh, either way, you can buy knives up there uh, if you want one. But everybody has a knife. And what we do, we just go up like this with our hand closed. You don't show them your knife. Because you might have a junker. We go like this, right, Dennis? And then we swap knives just like that. Man, I got a good one, and he got a... Oh, no. 
I do give good ones away, but we're, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to have fun with that tonight. So have a knife tonight, okay, guys? We just wanted to remind you of that. Yes, sir. A butter knife? Hey, buddy, a knife is a knife. <laughs> you define it however you want. You do. <laughs> He's messing with me now. Yes, sir, Dennis. Yesterday, you, Dennis, said when the Lord is present on your heart, trying to tell you something to listen. Yes, sir. When that video started with those kids at camp, the Lord pressed on my heart right now because I want to see my grandson on there next year. No. But I want to commit right now, I want to commit myself, I mean not myself, but to send at least two people to camp next year. And I want to see how many more men are going to commit right now to send at least two people to camp next year. Yeah, come on, come on. Everybody did this all the time. And then you can get with Gary later. So I'm just saying, I'll... The Lord just told me to get up here and say that to commit to two people. Yes, right on, Dennis. In fact, what the Lord put on my heart is we're going to take an offering right now, and we're going to do it for the youth camp. Amen. And they do a traveling youth camp, yep. and they get around, man, and they're doing some real work, Tex. And I, I, what is the fee, Gary? $10,000 each? These guys stood up for that. <laughs> so, 10000 for one, twenty five for two. <laughs> It's a, it's a good deal. Uh, 385 is what it costs for 385 to send a kid to youth camp. Yes. Yeah. When we got money, we raised money for pastors. We raised money for right here. Oh, yeah, man. We've done it. We have done it. No, 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 you don't have to pay today, but, you know. Thank you, Dennis. Hey, you know what that was, Dennis? That was a word from God. Amen. Give him a hand. Hey, somebody's listening to the teaching. Somebody's listening to the teaching. He got what you said last night. Thank you, Dennis to Dennis. That's pretty good. Amen. So we got some uh, cash giving envelopes if you want to give cash. This is going to go for our youth ministry at Faith Ministries. Amen. I got the same thing, Dennis. I didn't get the two guys, but I got the two people or whatever. But I got, I got, we're going to take this offering for the youth. And that's what's going to be, all right, guys? So uh, don't don't be cheap here, amen? Last night we talked about giving from the heart. Just give from the heart. This is going to go to our youth ministry. Let me tell you what, guys. Everything, let me tell you what. Everything at, at Faith Ministries for the ministers that are in this in this leadership and everything, we sell fun. We all sell. We, we buy our own airline tickets. Come on, we do. You, you know what that's about, there, my brother? You, you do, don't you? Yeah, we we know about that. And so we want to help Gary and the whole youth team uh, to, uh, take these kids to a new level, man. I'm telling you what. There's kids in this church, in my church, right here, that have lives are changed. Lives are changed. I mean, to tell you, my own grandkids, my grandkids were in some of them films. And I tell you what, man, I just weep. Yeah. Yes. Stops me from talking for a minute. Yeah, Guys, let's bless them today. Let's bless our youth camp. Uh, you just make the, make the checks out today. I, I did that wrong last night. I'm supposed to make them to Mountain High. But uh, you make the checks out to MHC, it's okay. We'll, we'll work it all through together. We'll do it all together. Don't be in a hurry to pass the basket. They're right checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be in a hurry. Let them write checks. Amen. Let them write big checks. Big. Oh, yeah. You can pay with a credit card. Sam will take your credit card. You can do it online to Tithely. And you go to godshappy.com. Click on giving. It's right there. You can get that. You can earmark it. It's easy. However you want to do it, you make it easy on yourself. Some of us are techie, some of us are not. But I, I know this, I know this, that youth camp text, thank you for that.
incredible testimony. Gary, thank you, and uh, Hans, all of you guys that work this thing, thank you. Thank you, because you know what? We do ministry, but we minister to a different people group than you do. That people group of our youth is a big deal to minister to. And we love it. And we, we're just so blessed to have it be a part of it. Yeah, there, my son Tim Shirley's here right there. He showed up, man. That's awesome. Good to see you, Tim. But you guys be a part of that. And uh, Father, I just pray over this offering today. And I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father God, for the anointing. Because the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. We're all anointed to give. And so we release this money today. And we thank you that Faith Ministries Youth Camps, Traveling Youth Camps, and their main youth camp are funded for two, the rest of 2020, 21, And we're going for it in funded. Not, not have to scrape to rent a van. I'm talking about funded in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we speak. And we speak it boldly today. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pass them, guys. Go ahead and pass them. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he's got he got, he got to put money in that thing. Hey, you know what? These guys listen to command. If you yell at them, they'll just come right to you. <laughs> Amen. Now what we're going to do, guys, we're just going to take a quick. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I just want to say our travel and youth camp, we're going to be doing one in November. TYC. TYC. We're going to go out to Kansas City in November, the second weekend there. We're going to do one locally. With Devon's Church, we're working on the dates for that, and then we're going to go down to Knox City in March, and we'll work out that date too. So if you got kids, we take, you know, we've taken 20, 25 from local and travel down there. So if your kids want to be a part of that, absolutely, come on. Hallelujah. You want a bus? They need a bus. So right now, you guys agree with us here, we're calling it in. We call the bus in right now. We're crazy enough to speak it in right now. We have a bus for faith ministries, a good bus, not some old junker, a new one, a one that runs, a good one, all sound. Not a van down by the river. <laughs> Amen. We call that in for these guys right now in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Gary. We love y'all. Take a quick 15-minute uh, break, and uh, we'll be right back here in just a few